I am over here in Riverside, California at PH Dogs with Bethany. She's one of the best trainers I know and she's gonna give us some information on how to work with our pup. So the next thing that we're gonna work on is handling. So when I'm working on handling with my puppy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a body part and I'm gonna reward him. So the grab is going to come first, the food is going to come second. So I'm going to touch my puppy and I'm gonna pay him. Touch his ear, pay him. Touch his other ear, pay him. So see now he's coming towards me. I'm going to pick up a paw, pay him. He gets his paw back. Pick up the other paw, pay him. He gets his paw back. Okay, if you notice when I'm picking up the paws, I'm not reaching for the toes. See the difference? So just like if I were to just touch your toes, you'd be like, what the heck? So, and you can see now he's backing up, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing that, I'm going to start, see now I lost his stress. So I can go back to just touching him here and paying him. Again, it's always okay to go back. Touch him on top of the head, pay him, go back. I'm gonna go back to those ears. Ears, reward. I can go shoulder, reward. Shoulder down, reward. Shoulder down, pop up, reward. So I can always go back. Right? I did that on purpose so that way I could show you what not to do, but you saw the results of what not to do. So now I can go paw up, reward, stop. Again, start the shoulder, go down, paw up, reward. So if he's not comfortable with me doing this here, of course I take him to a vet, strange place, I throw him on a table and I have a stranger do it, okay. of course he's gonna have a big reaction. And now you get a puppy that doesn't like going to the vet, doesn't like strangers touching them, because the vet is also gonna put a thermometer up his butt and probably poke him with the shots, right? So I wanna make sure that I desensitize the dog and I prepare them as much as possible, so that way when I go to the vet, it's a piece of cake. And you could see if I rushed it with this puppy, you can see again, just when I grabbed his foot, he was like, oh God, that really was impressive with him. He didn't like it and then he even avoided me for a little bit. So I want to make sure, especially if I have a puppy that's in that fear period, that I really do my best job to help them have positive experiences. I don't wait for problems to happen. I want to be proactive. Okay, so another issue that I think that um, is a common mistake is people will pay and then try and grab their paw yep. or their ear. So can you talk to us a little bit about that and why maybe that's not the best approach? Of course, so the order is very important. So I want the touch to predict food not the food to predict touch. And why that's important with nervous dogs is because if the food predicts the touch and the touch is scary, now the food becomes scary or the food becomes a predictor that something scary is going to happen. So I want the pet to predict good things happen. So instead of getting my puppy suspicious anytime I offer a treat, because you're like, oh, what's gonna happen to me? Now when somebody does pet the dog or reaches over their head or grabs their foot, they're like, hey, something good is gonna happen. So I'm counter conditioning, instead of conditioning the food to mean something scary, I'm conditioning something scary means food. Awesome. All right, yeah. All right, so we covered the weight scale, we covered the basic exam, they're gonna check the teeth, they're gonna check the ears, lift up the paws, they reach up, check. They'll come under, they'll grab the groin, and then they go in the backside. Yep. Okay, now say we're at the vet. Okay, so we're at the vet. Would you do that similar uh, training there? The vet touches him your reward. Absolutely. You know, okay. Yep. And I want to make sure that if I'm at the vet, I have stuff that's super, super high value and then I have a very hungry puppy. Okay. If my puppy is not hungry, if I don't have something that they really like, the fear of the vet is going to be more than their motivation for the food. Right. So I want to make sure that they have as much food motivation as possible because the vet can be pretty scary. So I want to make sure that my food is as hopefully better over the fear. If the fear is over the food, I'm gonna get a puppy that stops eating. And if the puppy stops eating, then I can't really use it. I'm not gonna force feed them. Right. So I wanna make sure that I have a very hungry puppy and then I have super high value treats. What you can also ask your vet, and if they are a good vet, they should absolutely let you do it, is have happy visits. So you go into your vet office, you know, and, and people will give them treats and you leave. And if I have a puppy like him, I would absolutely be doing that before I go for real shots. Mm -hmm. I want to create a positive association with that vet office. I want to create a positive association with those people. And that way, when I come back, my puppy's happy to be there. And then of course we get a thermometer, but they get a shot. It happens. But if they're already walking in scared, those things are, it's only going to get worse. So at least if I can walk in happy, I'm, I'm starting off on a good foot. Awesome. So, I'm getting him ready. I'm gonna take him for his first happy visit. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I wanna do is, usually my pups eat at night. 
So he'll eat at night. I'll schedule the visit maybe for the afternoon that day. I may day. not even feed dinner that night. Oh, okay. Great. I really want them hungry when I go. And this is where you have to know your dog. So he's not super food crazy. So I would want to make sure that he's for sure, for sure hungry. So I probably wouldn't even feed dinner that night. Okay. So don't feed dinner that night. Make sure I'm not giving him any treats. And then I get him there. And at that point, we're using the same progressive approach mm -hmm. to getting him uh, comfortable with the situation. Yep. And right? I would get r like really high value stuff. So like if he normally gets hot dogs at home for training, I'm going to stop at McDonald's and get him cheeseburger with no bread. I'm going to get chicken nuggets. I'm going to get the stuff that he never gets. I would rather have him maybe get the squirts, but really understand that when we're at the vet, that's where bacon, chicken, the big cheeseburgers, the, you know, the, the best of the best awesome. happens here. Because again, I want to make sure that that motivation for the food is more than the fear. And if he's already nervous of being handled, and again, it depends on how much homework you do, but I really want to make sure he has a positive association. So that means that he has to be hungry and he has to want what I have. So I'm going to do my best to ensure that that's the case. Awesome. All right, guys. So that's exactly what we need. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down in the comments. All right. And we'll make sure that we answer them. But this is absolutely, I mean, there's so much gold in just this particular lesson from Bethany.